Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush back at it with another video. Want to talk about some great news about Cyberpunk 2077, probably my most anticipated game out of any game that's coming out. Probably won't be released for quite a while, but I was speculating earlier about the game possibly being exclusive to some sort of PC platform. Chances are GOG, if it were to be exclusive, because that is CD Projekt Red's own game store. Probably wouldn't be an Epic store exclusive unless Epic just brought out a gigantic check. But CD Projekt Red has confirmed that the game is going to be released on all platforms and they're going to be continuing their pro-consumer behavior, so that's great news. Also, Capcom is now considering the PC an important platform and will strive to further expand its PC sales. At this point, Capcom is releasing the majority of their games on PC. Some games do see delayed releases like a Monster Hunter World, but I do want to take a look at the statement they made and what I'd like to see from Capcom going forward. Also, Anthem just released on February 22nd. PC players have been playing a little bit longer with Origin Access, but the early sales in UK are indicating that this game has been a commercial disaster. But that is only pointing towards physical sales. Anthem is a game that I do think a lot of people bought digitally. However, sales are still looking very, very weak. So I do want to talk a little bit about that and why I wouldn't close the book on Anthem just yet. And lastly, I do have a great deal for you guys on a Zotac GeForce GTX 1070. It is refurbished. However, the deal on it is so good. Free shipping on it as well. So that's a great GPU. The 1660 Ti is considerably more expensive. And the 1070 is comparable in performance. Not quite as powerful, but still very, very good. More on that at the end of this video. First up, CD Projekt Red will not be releasing Cyberpunk 2077 exclusively on any platform, whether it be GOG, which is their own platform, and I had speculated that because I do believe Thronebreakers The Witcher Tale had like a timed exclusive release on GOG. I think it was a one-month window, so it wasn't even that long, unlike Metro Exodus, which is a year long. But at this point, Thronebreaker has been released on Steam. I was thinking that, hey, maybe if CD Projekt Red wanted to get more traction to GOG, Cyberpunk 2077 was the game to release as an exclusive title because Metro Exodus, while it is a great game, I don't think that's as big of a game to get people to jump on over to the Epic Store. Cyberpunk 2077, if you got that as an exclusive release on any platform, Origin or GOG, let's just say a platform that was competent, I think Cyberpunk 2077 would get people to flock on over to that platform. But at the same time, you have to imagine that CD Projekt Red's games sell very, very well on Steam as a platform. However, CD Projekt Red has apparently decided to forego potentially higher revenue on their own store in favor of keeping their game accessible through as many platforms as possible. A simple inquiry on Facebook actually revealed that that they don't have any intention of making the game a GOG exclusive. Somebody sent a message saying, hi guys, I've just been wondering if there is a possibility of Cyberpunk 2077 being a GOG exclusive. The Facebook account just responded bluntly saying, we don't want exclusives. So that's great. CD Projekt Red has always been in the forefront of doing pro-consumer things, and that's why everybody really loves CD Projekt Red. I don't really know if I agree with them being the developer of the year or whatever that Steam gave them for the year of 2018, considering they didn't release much that year, but it goes without saying that CD Projekt Red is a tremendous developer, and it's good to see that they're going to be releasing their game on all platforms. If they want to release their game on the Epic Store, by all means, release it on the Epic Store, but release it on GOG as well. Release it on Steam. Release it on Origin. Release it on everything. Give gamers the option to pick up the game from the platform that they like the best, so that is great news. And honestly, I wouldn't have even held it against CD Projekt Red that much if they decided to release the game exclusively to GOG. GOG is a great platform. It's a platform with their own infrastructure. They've built that platform and Cyberpunk 2077 is gonna be a tremendous game. So I could understand from a business sense why they would wanna make it a GOG exclusive, but hey, they're doing the great thing by many of us and we can pick up the game from wherever we want. So that's great news. Moving on from that, Capcom is now considering the PC an important platform and will strive to further expand its PC sales. This is specifically what they said. This is through Google Translate. So just keep that in mind. From the viewpoint of promoting digital strategy, expansion of the PC platform spread cannot be overlooked. The sales ratio of the PC versions in our main titles have been improving every year and we will strive to further expand sales as an important platform. Now, if you actually look at the commercial reception on PC of Monster Hunter World and Resident Evil 2 Remake, you could tell that those games both did incredibly, incredibly well. Resident Evil 2, like right from the get-go, was the top seller on Steam and it was at the top selling point for quite a while and you look at the Steam reception for that game from a review standpoint, standpoint, it's got a bunch of reviews, I believe it's still at overwhelmingly positive, MH World had some hurdles to go through initially, 
but it turned out to be a great game as well. Unfortunately, with Monster Hunter World, we did have a delayed release, and we're not even going to get the first expansion day and day with consoles. Hopefully, in the future, things like that will be remedied, and the PC experience in terms of releases will be similar to console releases. Of course, performance is a completely different story. You would hope the PC is considerably ahead on that. As far as existing Capcom titles that I'd like to see make their way over to PC, I would like to see a lot of the legacy Mega Man titles make their way over to PC. I just understand that a lot of those games were released on portable platforms, so it'd be hard to release, say, like a Mega Man Star Force. That's one from the vault for you guys, but I love those games on the Nintendo DS. Of course, making those games on PC, that would be a little bit difficult, but I'd love to see games like Mega Man Battle Network released as a collection on PC. I think something like that could definitely happen because we have seen the other Mega Man collections released on PC. We have seen more niche titles like Onimusha Warlords come to PC. I don't think it's a complete Far Cry that we'll see other collections. And of course, how could I forget Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen? I feel like that's the game that really started it all and really made Capcom commit more to PC gaming just with how well that game did. And of course, now we can be looking forward to Devil May Cry 5. That's Capcom's latest release and that game is shaping up very nicely as well. But just be mindful of the fact that Capcom is going to take PC gaming quite a bit more seriously they have been for the last few years if I'm completely honest. Moving on from that, Anthem just saw its release on all platforms and the early UK sales numbers are not looking too good. Now these are only from physical sales so you have to keep in mind Anthem is an online driven game. It's a game that was available through Origin Access, EA Access on Xbox One. Maybe a lot of people are checking it out through those services but physical sales are still important and you have to look at them and Daniel Ahmed over at a post on Restera, he's a games analyst, he noted that Anthem sold around 10% of what Destiny sold in its first week. Andromeda sold more than double, and yes, Andromeda itself was nearly half of what Mass Effect 3 sold in its first week. He also noted that again, these are package sales comparisons, and digital missing does skew the figures. Digital sales, which EA themselves say is approaching 50% of overall sales for them, are now counted, nor is EA Access players. There were incentives to buy the digital version, so I'd expect a really high digital share for the game. So while, yes, on the surface, saying 10% of Destiny 1 sales and half of Andromeda sales, that sounds really, really really bad. In the case of those games, Andromeda was a single player game. It was a game that a lot of people were going to the store and just buying physical copies. Destiny 1 was an online driven game, but that was released early on in this generation. And at that point, people weren't completely climatized to digital gaming. So that's something to be mindful of as well. But it looks like from the early commercial numbers that Anthem isn't doing all too hot. I don't rule this game out completely yet though, because from what I've seen and what I've played, I've had an enjoyable time. I haven't sunk a lot of time into Anthem, but I do see potential here. And we know that that there's an experience that's going to evolve over the course of the next year, 16, 18 months, maybe even longer than that. And I've just seen some crazy gaming turnarounds that I never want to put any game past the point of return. I could see Fallout 76 make a return. I mean, did you see what happened with No Man's Sky? Did you see what happened with Final Fantasy 14 ESO? Those games were absolutely atrocious at launch. I just point to FF14. God, that game was god awful and somehow it's one of the biggest MMOs available today. Obviously, it required Square Enix to do a lot of work with that game, but that's why I don't rule any game out of making a comeback. I could see the same thing with Anthem because I do see that the fundamentals are there for an even better experience. But right now, the game is struggling a little bit, and I think that's a big problem for EA, especially because this is a game they really needed to turn out well. After all of the negative backlash that they've been having with games like Battlefield 5, games like Star Wars Battlefront 2, you wanted Anthem to be a really stellar hit. Unfortunately, right out the gates, it's not hitting that level. However, they can really rely on Apex Legends for now. I don't think anyone was expecting Apex Legends to be as big of a success as it was, and for EA, that's something they can rest on. But hopefully going forward and going into the latter portion of 2019, we can see some compelling games released by them, whether it be more Battlefield 5 content, whether it be a Titanfall 3, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, there are some interesting games, I just hope they turn out pretty well. And lastly, I do want to note to you guys that if you're looking for a new video card, the Zotac GeForce GTX 1070 is available for $225. Now, this is a refurbished GPU. However, it's got free shipping and $225 for a 1070 is very, very good. A Zotac card is great and the 1070 is pretty comparable to what the 1660 Ti is doing. A little bit less so, but it's still a very good 1440p, 1080p video card. You don't want to be hitting 4K with the majority of titles with the 1070. It could definitely go at 4K with some lower end titles.
titles, but if you're trying to push like a Metro Exodus, obviously that's not going to turn out well. But as far as a great 1440p and 1080p card goes, the 1070 still holds up really, really well. Ideally, you would be wanting to play at 1080p if you are looking for high settings, 60 frames per second and things like that. But definitely 1440p is feasible as well. I'll leave a link to that in the description box down below. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, Cyberpunk 2077 will not be exclusive to any store, including GOG. Capcom is considering PC as an important platform and they plan to expand on that. The early Anthem sales are not looking all too hot. And check out that deal on that GeForce GTX 1070. Link to that in the description box below. That's going to conclude this video. If you guys have a request for a future video, you can always leave that in the comment section down below. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the the content I'm posting but as always guys thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one peace out